what is going on world it is the moment the magic the money drag in angelo carter and you are now tuned in to the three count podcast oh do you want to get live with me do you really want to ride with me I'm in the club with the grind. Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering. And I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mountain to go wrestling. And by season, you know, five <laughs> or 300 and something episode, I would just hope you say it with me, I am your Sherpa. Because like your tribal chief, acknowledge me. I know that's right. But... <laughs> Like every good shepherd, you got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. That's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering. So who's entering? You can find this person at Focus Pro Wrestling, Cap TV, GCW, Blitz Green. You can find them at T2T, 880, BLP. You can also find them at Tetsu. They are the money dragon. They are the diamond. They are the moment. They are, take a second. And pose. They are Angelo Carter. You better know the theme song. You better know. You better know. Okay. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. I love talking to people. Hey, no, I so I genuinely I now yes, I tell people like all the time, right? Like, if like everybody who comes on this podcast, I genuinely want them on the show. Like I go out of my way to get them, talk to them, bring them on because I have a lot of fun with people and I, I get instant vibes. And, uh, yeah, your presentation at Focus Pro, uh, I think it was Saved by the Bell, that you and I first met. Yeah. I was just, I was an instant fan. I was like, yes. Thank you. It's like, this person gets it. They're into it. They really Thank having you. a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. And then the more we got to talking, the more I started realizing, oh, we have, like, a lot more in common. Yeah. And then especially with, like, all the people in our network, I was like, yo, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is so lit. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I love Focus Pro, um, and wrestling is such a small, like, business. Like, you literally, like, are one degree away from knowing some of the biggest stars on television. Like, I just got done telling you, and, like, you know, if you have followed, you know, T2T at any point, whatever, you know, Willow Nightingale was one of our trainers, and now she is the current TBS champion on AEW. Like, so you're literally who is feuding with Mercedes Monet, who is, I'm sure we'll talk about this later, who is like one of my inspirations in this industry. So I'm like, yeah, I'm one degree away from knowing Mercedes Monet. Like, uh, are you kidding me? So yeah. Yeah, it's always interesting. And that's why I tell a lot of people is that you're always, you literally are like one, one skip away from somebody else, like knowing literally. that person. And it's it's such a it's such a weird and unique business to like be in or entertainment, performance, whatever you want to call oh, it. Yeah. Like, it's so it's so unique to be involved mm-hmm. with because like just like recently, like I was on Twitter and I was out or X, whatever, you yeah. know, and I'm I'm talking to people and having fun with my conversations and stuff, and I see uh like our truth like like you know caption this or something like that and so i retweeted it and put a caption together and then he liked it and retweeted it and then he followed me back and i was like jesus like i'm being followed by our truth john like, cena I and can't. aj francis i was like oh my god <laughs> right like come on our truth is literally like iconic like he's amazing he's a national treasure like all he is genuinely a national treasure <laughs> When he, uh, I was at Wally Mania this year, and when he came out to perform at Wally Mania, I was, I don't know if he was advertised. I can't really remember, but like, I was genuinely like, oh my God, 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 like, we were going so crazy in the VIP section. We were having a freak, can I curse? Yeah, of course. Okay. We were having a fucking blast. (laughs) You know, you just got to ask if you can cuss. Like, you know, it's just a thing. Yeah. I think it's always interesting to like, sit back and like observe the scene and watch everybody yeah. just kind of like i don't know a- enjoy themselves too and this is why i like it like with you right like and that's what i was saying like if you're genuinely like a fan of somebody you're gonna you're gonna learn you're gonna research that person yeah. and then like bro like you have like so much to talk about and i have i have i've had people in like in the business as well as people outside of the business who have told me they're like bro like when I I love watching your show because every time you talk to someone, like you can see 
two parts. One, you can see their genuality come out, and then you see yeah. your genuality as established. And it's fun because like they feel like they have a they have a connection with yeah. whoever it is I bring on the show, and I think that's important. And I was like, yeah. it's like yeah, I was like, but for me, like if you become a genuine fan of that person, of course you're gonna know and pose right like <laughs> <laughs> the, i i swear like one day like if we're ever like in a ring as like with red dog like there's gonna be a full i'm i'm fully committing to the idea of like buying a fan and then right when i see you hit it i'm like and pose as well <laughs> Just <Okay>. go with it <laughs> i don't have mine on me right now it's in my uh i'm traveling right now i'm going to be at 880 tomorrow in pittsburgh but it's it's somewhere in my gear bag but if i had it i would give you a clap for a good old uh for <laughs> approval for that <laughs> yo all right so let me hop right into this right i want to know who is angelo carter who is Angelo Carter? Angelo Carter is your best friend. Angelo Carter is your brother, your sister, your fucking uh, uncle, your cousin. Angelo Carter to, and I've always described like myself and the character as just. Yeah, I get a lot of my stuff from reality television and like imagine a housewife on, you know, imagine a real housewife on as a wrestler. Like that's me. And, you know, people love the real housewives. People love to hate the real housewives. You know, people love the Kardashians. People love to hate the Kardashian. I feel like there's relatability everywhere. And you can watch these reality stars and really take something from them, whether it's their their comedy, whether it's you know, their opulence, whether it's their delusional, you know, nature, like you can pull from anything. And I just feel like I enjoy being that person who thinks that they are on television all the time, because all throughout my life, people have said, you need to be on camera. You need to be on television. You need to be doing something like people need to see your personality. And I'm just like, you know, well, bitch, put the cameras in front of me then. If you ain't going to bring me the cameras, I'm going to put the cameras in front of me myself. Right. So this is where we are. I am just, I'm, ev honey, I'm everything. That's what I am. <laughs> it's funny, right? Because like I was just having this conversation with my wife. Uh, a, a little while ago, right? And mm -hmm. uh, I was like, yo, I guess I understand like why you love, because she's a big Housewives fan, right? Vanderpump Rules, The Bachelor, yeah. all of that, right? And I was like, oh, I, I, I understand why you like this show. And she's like, why? I was like, it's, it's just like pro wrestling. It's just trash TV. And it's always fun to be in front of. And she was like, yeah. I was like, it's literally TV that you just turn your brain off and just watch it. And you can just like enjoy what you're watching. So when you say that you're, you're like a housewife. I was like, bro, I start instantly thinking about this conversation. <laughs> I was like, yo, this is this is top notch, right? <laughs> I want people to have fun when they see me, whether or not they want to like me, whether or not they want to hate me, whatever. I want you to have fun when you see me. When I watch, when I turn on an episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta or Salt Lake City or Potomac or whatever city is on Beverly Hills, whatever, right? I'm turning, I'm actively, like, obviously I'm watching as a fan, so, like, part of my brain is on, and I'm just like, oh, I can't stand this one, whatever. But, like, I'm actively choosing to have fun and watch the show and laugh at the jokes and the shade and the confessionals and the fashions and the, and the why are these women in Austin, Texas, and these women are supposed to be rich. Like, they need to be in fucking Mexico somewhere. Like, that is why I watch these shows, and I want people to get the same joy that I get from watching an episode of The Real Housewives with when they see me in the ring. I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> so, A, uh, what was that moment that you ultimately decided, like, A, like, I got to get in the ring now. This is this is it. So, I want to go, uh, we got to go back. Um, I was a theater kid. Can't you tell? <laughs> I was a theater kid. Um, I was a Disney kid. Uh, I was a professional. I was pursuing professional singing. I was, I've was. i been a vocalist all my life, but I've been pursuing like singing. I was pursuing it for about 17 years. 
from the time I was like seven till I was like 23, 24. And it was like something that I really, really wanted to do, right? But in 2015, yes. No, it was actually 2016. I didn't watch this match when it first happened. But um, I had watched Sasha Banks versus Bayley at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. And I will forever credit that match being the match that made me go, oh my gosh, like I want to be a wrestler. Like that would be so cool. And, you know, from there, like I had already been watching wrestling. Like I think I started watching wrestling at like 10. I want to say my earliest memories are like 2008, like right when the PG era started. Mm. And then my dad in 2009, I think he bought uh, SmackDown versus Raw with DX on the cover. I never remember what year it is, but I think it's 2009. Yes. Um, yeah. And that game just became my game. He bought it as a way for me and him and my younger brother to like bond or whatever, but it was no, it became my game. I became enthralled with it. Wrestling was just the newest thing for me. And I, that's when I really got into wrestling. And when I wanted to become a wrestler was like 2016. And from there, it was just like off to the races. It's funny too, because like, I know for me, like, uh, my first moments of it was, I, I've talked about it a couple of times, but it was, uh, Jake Snake Roberts letting the Cobra bite Macho Man while he's on the Oh road. my gosh, yeah. I was a kid. It's so iconic. Yeah, <laughs> I was a kid when that happened. And I remember being so wrapped up and then like my aunt was like, nah, you, you can't watch this. I was like, is it always like this? And she's like, no, it's not like this. And uh, I remember like seeing it that time and then like months later or like years later, I would randomly see Chris Jericho at the beginning of mm. WCW for oh, wow. uh, <clears throat> Saturday night main event. And then, like, I remember watching TNT and seeing Rey Mysterio come out and wrestle yeah. Dean Malenko and just being enthralled and, like, just engulfed into that world then, right? And I remember, right. like, one time I was flipping channels and then I see this bald dude with a vest, like, drinking beer, like, on the on the set, right? So I was like, Iconic. whoa, there's, there's another wrestling show? And then just, like, yeah. wrapping my world, like, just into it. Uh, and I just remember, like... I remember watching Halloween Havoc 97 live and seeing Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero just like tear the roof down. And oh it, my God, for you me, watched that show live? Yeah, I could, yeah, that's how old One I of am. my favorite <laughs> matches ever of all. Well, that is one of my favorite matches of all time. Oh, yeah. It's a classic. And I, so I tell good. everybody, it's my, it's my favorite match. Well, Rey Mysterio, full transparency, is my favorite wrestler of all time. So okay. it doesn't like still watching him work in the ring now. It just gives me yeah. the same butterflies that I saw when I saw him wrestle in 96, wow, 97. that's so cool. And then, like, watching his early stuff in ECW, like, that's, like, yeah. that's me. Like, I'm just... And yeah, rapping. yeah, yeah. So, but no, it's, uh, it, it's interesting because, like, to me, and to listening to people talk about wrestling, it's so much fun to, like, enjoy everybody else's journey because also that Brooklyn, that Brooklyn match, like, I remember, like, saying, man, this is, this is something something to yeah. watch and then uh in, in 2020 I, I have the date of it tattooed on my arm actually oh really yeah oh, in awesome. roman numerals yeah i got this like three years ago okay I like yeah that. oh that's so much that's so fun uh i remember like uh for me uh in in, in 2020 and so it was like 2019 i met this i met this kid while i was working uh my job and i was like yo i was like i gotta get into this right and yeah. uh I, everywhere I looked, wrestling was around. But this kid was like, he he was like, yo, I, I wrestle. I was like, oh, like a pro wrestler? And he's like, not quite. <laughs> and I was like, ah, I got you. Yeah, I want in. And so, like, I jumped in. And then, like, a year later, I got into, I made I made the jump. Because I was like, yo. Yeah. I was like, it's either now or never. Like, it's either yeah. we're going to do this or we're not going to do this. Oh, we're not going to do it, yeah. Yeah. So, I made the jump. And I was like, this is going to be so much fun. And since then, it has been. <laughs> No, it's the, I, I tell people all the time who ask me like, oh my gosh, like, you know, do you, do you love it? I'm like, you can't not have some form of love for this and do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it's very, it's very taxing mentally 
And a lot of people are like, yeah, body, you know what I'm saying? Like, your body probably hurts. And I'm like, yes, my body always fucking hurts. I'm 26 turning 25. Like, yes, my body hurts. But like, yes, yes to all that. But it's so mentally taxing. And people don't quite understand that part. But, you know, you really have to love this in order to do it. And there are, and look, there are some exceptions to the rule. I, and I'm sure you have as well, experienced people in locker rooms who absolutely fucking hate wrestling, but still do it because they don't know how to do anything else. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you, you got to find your love and your joy and your passion for this somewhere to really enjoy what you're doing. And I'm I like, once I really began to tap into shit, I'm just having fun, bitch. bitch. Like we, <laughs> like we ball after this, I'm going to go get a cocktail. I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to have a good match. And we're just going to move on after like, you know, tomorrow's another day. Next week's a new match. Once I really, really started to absorb that, I started having the best fucking time. Yeah. It was one of those things where I had to learn to like one, like, you're right. Like um, mentally, like this game is taxing. Like, mm -hmm. and if, and I guess for me, it was kind of I I kind of lucked out in the situation of like learning patience because of like being in the military. And so mm -hmm. when I came came into the military or into the to the wrestling game, like I was already kind of like, all right, I'm on this hurry up and wait process anyway. So yeah. like I'm gonna take my time. But even yeah. for me, man, there are times where I'm like, bro, maybe I just maybe I don't got it. Maybe I'm not supposed to be here. Maybe I'm not supposed yeah. to be wanting to do this. And it's it's tough. And sometimes you have to be like, nah, 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 nah. I, I can do this. I can I can hang and bang and mm -hmm. have fun. And like then you're like, well, I gotta I gotta go do this or I gotta do that. And then you realize like, mm -hmm. oh no, I have to go, you know, I wanna go to wrestling because I have to go show face and help set up rings yeah. and stuff like that mm -hmm. to to break into this. It is it gets tough though, man, mentally. And sometimes oh, you're yeah. just like, bro, this is never gonna work out. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I I want to say it was like 2022, like when I really first started to like break out. Because, you know, 2021 was my debut year. Yeah. But like also 2021 wasn't like, when's this shit happening for real? Because we were still a little bit like, it was the very late stages of like the lockdown and like shows were coming back. So I want to say 2022 was really like when I started to break out and it was really like my debut year. And I would always, like, I wouldn't understand like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm showing up, I'm showing face. Like what, what, what's happening? Like what, you know, why don't people really like fuck with me for real and stuff like that. And like, I think in the last, especially last year and this year, I've kind of just gotten to a point where I'm having fun. I just want to enjoy myself. I just want to, like, I'm going to make sure, I'm obviously going to make sure I'm doing all the work that I can because, look, everybody's dream is to make it to the main event of WrestleMania. Like, we have to be, you know what I'm saying, right? And obviously, you know, one of my dreams is to go and wrestle on television and be, you know, this big star, but also, like, do things outside of that and make all this fucking money and, you know, you know, just the, ba the regular dreams that you have as a wrestler. But one thing that I started doing was putting on my like year goal list. Yeah. Make sure you're having fun. Because if I don't make sure that I'm having fun, if I get too caught up in the quote unquote politics, or if I get too caught up in the why isn't this person booking me or why haven't I been brought back here? Or, you know, do you do you hate me? Is it because I'm this? Is it because I'm that? You know what I'm saying? Do I not fit your mold? It doesn't really matter. Like I just want to have fun. Yes, at the same time, I still want to get signed. I still want to get to certain promotions. I still want to get to certain places. And I realize that there's a lot of work that I have to do to get places, which is why I'm in the gym five days a week, which is why, you know, I'm constantly now wrestling is playing on a loop in my brain now, which is why I literally live at my trading facility. You can ask any single person who goes to T2T. I'm, I'm literally there like every, almost every day that we're open. And you know, I, I, I'm doing the work. I know I'm doing the work. You know, can I be working harder? Absolutely. And I'm always on myself for you need to be here. You need to be doing this. You need to be working harder. But also, if I keep that, if I continue to do that, I'm not going to have any fun. Yeah. And I'm going to end up like a lot of people that I have watched over the last three, four years. And I don't want to end up like any of those people. I'm going to have fun. Well, I'm and you've got to be. 
you've had a pretty badass mentor, you know, with the yeah. the, T, the new TBS champion, uh, Willow. Because this is one thing about Willow is that, like, she is always having fun. Like, she, she oh, yes. it's almost like it's a mental check kind of game that, like, hey, like, yeah. There are more. There are ups and downs, right? We all have good days and bad days, right? But yeah, if as long as you're having fun and you're enjoying what you're doing, it's it it's enough to get you through. And that's like the I part. have known Will. Well, I've I've known Willow for like three years now. When I tell you, I have not seen that lady without a smile on her face. I have not ever seen that lady without a smile on her face. And that's just a testament to who she is as a person, because yeah. she's just absolutely iconic. She's amazing. She's just beautiful love her forever and ever and ever every time i see her i always tell her thank you because so many of the things that she taught me i bring with me constantly everywhere that i go and you know it was why it's in watching her too that i have learned how to maintain a level of joy in this industry because it's hard especially for someone like me who is out, you know what I'm saying? Who is a gay black man who is working in this very, you know, straight dominated, straight white man dominated industry. It's not easy. So to watch her and have this joy constantly on her face, it's just a reminder of make sure you're having fun. Yeah. So she's amazing. Love her down. Speaking of, Something that you just brought up, right? Being yeah. a minority in this sport, right? This entertainment, this performance, whatever. Like I, I use all those terms because like I've heard so many people use those and I'm like, man, whatever you want to call this thing yeah. that we live in, like, yeah, this it is what it is. But yeah. no, being a how do how do you feel about you putting putting your mark on the business and then trying to elevate that next mark for, you know, like you said, a gay black man in this industry? I mean that's so, such a loaded question. Um, I feel like, you know, I, I absolutely want to leave my mark on the industry. I feel like I want to be what my subordinates with the people who came before me, you know, envisioned for us. I want to take that baton and run with it. Like, I envision, you know, us in these rooms and in these places that we never were necessarily allowed to be in or that we were never necessarily and maybe not allowed maybe you know allowed in like the literal sense but in like the you know the subconscious sense like you know you know when you walk into a room and nobody wants you in that room you know that <laughs> and you know and that's just like common whatever but it's one of those things where i want these rooms to be bigger and if these rooms stay smaller, I want more of us in these small rooms. I, I want to push out these industry norms. I want to break these uh, con confines of, you know, what it looks like to be a professional wrestler. I want to continue to help do that. You know, something that Billy Dixon, who is my fairy godmother, I love him so much, love him to death has been doing and had been doing with, you know, Pro Wrestling Vibe and just has been doing by existing. Eddie McQueen is another person that I love. Sunny Kiss, another person that I love. You know, something that Effie's been doing with Big Gay Brunch, breaking down these confines of what it means to be a professional wrestler, what it means to be in this industry. Big Gay Brunch sold out in January and not a single match was announced. You know what I'm saying? So I want the things I want to be, you know, the person that takes the baton and continues to run forward with it, you know, when, you know, if, uh, you know, eventually when Billy and like Effie and all these guys are like, okay, I'm done. But like, I want to be able to be a person that is like, look, I'm here. I can take that baton and run with it and continue the conversation and be trusted to do that. So, I mean, I hope that answers your question. I feel like I've talked in circles, but yeah. No, 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 definitely. No, I understand because it's, you know, especially for me because like, you know, yeah, I, I'm Panamanian, right? Like I'm half yeah. Panamanian, right? Estoy un mitzizo, if anybody wants to know what that, if you don't know what that means, go look it up because uh, I'm not going to explain it. But, you know, I don't, I didn't, I didn't have a lot of people to, for myself, right? Like I remember mm -hmm. going online and like looking up like, 
people who are Panamanian and pro wrestlers, right? And like not finding mm-hmm. anybody. And yeah. for me, like obviously everybody has like, you know, you could be like, well, there's tons of people who are from Mexico and Puerto Rico. Right. And and it's like that's cool and all, but like that's I cool. want a person that represents me. Exactly. Me. exactly. <laughs> and so for me, what threw me off is that during uh it was uh Hispanic Heritage Month, it's like three years ago. I remember just like looking through and I saw Bobby Lashley and I was like, what the fuck is Bobby Lashley doing with the Hispanic? Right. And I didn't know. Wait, really? Yeah. And then I come to find out that Bobby Lashley is Panamanian as well. And I was like, holy shit. And he's former military. I was like, holy shit. Oh, this yeah. is my dude, right? He was made for you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, the Almighty and the Red Dog. We just, we have to say, <laughs> yo. And, yeah. He and was sure, made for like, you. And sure, like he was army and I was air force, right? But nonetheless, like it's now it's so cool Same thing. to have Same a connection, thing. have a connection with somebody yeah. who like I'm like, yes, this is what I was looking for. So it's cool to like have someone now that could be like, yo, that's I see that person and I kind of admire this person's work and what they right. do. And so for me, it's like I don't I don't want to be that person that like I have to step down now because like, oh well, like it got too hard or I didn't right. want to accomplish my dreams because uh you know other things got in the way like right now like full transparency like bro i'm gonna be honest with you like i'm turning 39 this year and like for me just getting in the ring was a goal (laughs) yeah and like then i got in and i wrestled and i bumped right for the first time uh in a pro ring and then i got my first pro match and then i got my first pro title and then i got you know so things started happening i was like yo i got a whole bunch of new firsts and i was like now it's like Mm -hmm. what do we do next how do we get to the next what's next yes 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 yes. so I was living in Maryland and chasing then we the Massachusetts. Yeah, now we like now we have to go and figure out what we're yeah. doing next. Mm-hmm. But like to me now, it's like, all right, so what can I do to help us solidify not just like what our people do, but how we represent and where are we gonna go next? Of course. And of course. so I want to raise the bar up that next level. Be like, look, we doing these things right. And to me, like this year alone, right, WrestleMania was amazing because Damian Priest, Bailey. And oh, Cody yeah. Rhodes all holding titles. Yeah. Three Latinos right there holding titles. And not just not just but a Puerto Rican, a Cuban, and a Mexican, like all holding yeah. titles. And like, yo, that is so lit. I was like, and Insane. I want to be able to yes. help. And I want to help, like, and I want to help push the bar up a little bit more too, every single time. Like, whatever I can do, whatever I can, wherever I can be. And I don't want to be like the and that's the other part too. Like, and as you you know, right? Like, I'm not I'm not in a box, I'm not a luchador. I'm not some I'm not some gangster, right? I'm a fucking mercenary who loves to crack jokes. And yeah. unfortunately, sometimes it comes a, a little too real whenever you're literally doing the Carlton in the middle of a match. <laughs> <laughs> but that's where I see myself. I'm like, yo, I just yeah. want to push that bar up higher. And I just want to have yeah. fun and show people that we have a great time too. Let's keep pushing the boundaries. It's like, you know, it's something that you know, and I'm I'm sure we'll talk about this too. I mean, if you don't know this, you probably don't know me. I am very, I'm the biggest Beyonce fan on this planet. I love that lady. Like she is my own family. Um, she has gotten me through so much. Her music is just, I could talk about her for days. But one thing that she's been doing with these last few albums, especially with Cowboy Carter, was pushing the boundaries of genre and going, well, no, Black people created country music. We are pushing the boundaries of what country music and Americana is with this album. And that's what I want to do. And that's what I want to keep doing with professional wrestling. I want to keep pushing the boundaries of what people think a professional wrestler is. We don't all look like Finn Balor now. Would I like to look like Finn Balor? Absolutely. But... (laughs) That's a lot of work. And I'm getting here. I'm working on it. But I don't look like him right now. Right. <laughs> so you know what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. Trust me. <laughs> I'm, I'm aware. Because even like me, like I'm looking back and I see that man, like he's he's very like, and and there's like a couple things that go into it, right? Like one, he obviously very disciplined, right? And how he does. His workout regimen is like ridiculous. Yeah. I, I've seen the things that that dude does. And I'm like, I want to emulate that dude's workout plan because I see how hard he's working. And, you know, fortunately for someone like me, like I just happen to work at a gym. So like, I just, oh, nice. I just put in the work and I train people yeah. and I just go put in the work myself. So yeah. I'm like always like at the edge of like trying to cut it and figure it all out. 
But, I just uh, changed my workout regimen. Like I, I just like maybe three weeks ago, like got back, got to like a brand new like workout regimen because I was just like all over the place these last six to seven months. But I just changed my workout regimen. I just got to a place where I'm like, it's steady. I feel growth. I like I, I see changes. I started going to the gym in the morning. I was never that person. I, when I tell you, anybody who knows me, I tell them I wake up at the crack of 2 p.m. <laughs> I like Because that. that's just what it is. But now I've been starting, I've been getting up at like 5.30 in the morning, going to the gym at 6, you know, doing cardio in the morning. Sometimes I'll do my whole workout in the morning or I'll just do uh, cardio in the morning and then I'll do, um, I'll come back and lift later you know, and just try to make it as quick as possible. I'm still one of those people who spend way too much time in the gym just because I sit and I get comfortable and you're <laughs> not going to tell me that I can't spend five minutes trying to do two. You're not going to tell me that I can't do that because I can't. I could do whatever the fuck I want. But, <laughs> and I'm working on it. But, you know, I, I, I'm changed it and I feel good about it. So, Finn, I'm coming, I'm coming for you, okay? No, I, I understand where you're coming from. Cause like for me, when I first started getting back in the gym back in twenty six when I got back into the gym, 2016, 2017, um, mm -hmm. I was like, yo, I'm gonna do 45 minutes of on the elliptical every day, regardless. And and I did. And then I was like, and after that, I was like about a month in, I was like, all right, I'm gonna do 45 minutes of cardio every day, and then I'm gonna do like 45 minutes of lifting. And so I would be like an hour and a half. And then eventually like an hour and a half turned into two hours, turned into two and a half hours, turned into three hours, turned into a thing where I was like, bro, I'm not getting enough sleep because I'm literally working out late at night from, you know, seven till 10 o'clock. I was like, I need to be in bed. You get me. <laughs> <laughs> you understand me. You yep. understand me on a very deep, on a, on a, on a deep level. And that is why from this day forward, you are now my cousin. Because you understand me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got you. And then so like what ended up coming for me was learning how to dial this. Well, okay, so it came through a couple things, right? Uh, fortunately for me, like I also have a mentor in, in personal training who has like changed okay. up my whole game plan. So I've had someone mm -hmm. fix my stuff. And it showed me what I was like doing wrong. But then like yeah. they also understood like just naturally, like I just I wasn't knowing how to I even though I could properly lift, there were some things like I just didn't know how to do right. And for some yeah. reason, like full transparency, this is my favorite thing. Certain people and I'll go like this, right? Those who are watching <laughs> will know. Uh I blow their minds because I have a 48 inch box jump at 39 years old. Like, and I didn't know how to jump. Like I was just leaping on top of stuff, trying to figure it out. And uh, so once I learned how to actually jump, like I was like, oh, so now we're like increasing it now. So we're like to 40, I think we're up to like 50 inches now, like flat footed box jumps. And it's insane to be able to get my feet up like that high with that much Girl, I'm going to come to Massachusetts just so you could teach me how to uh, do a, a 50 inch box jump. I could jump, but I don't know if I get that. I can't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. I help you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I've I've learned how to like do like certain things, and then so my trainer came through. Well, my mentor slash trainer, he came through, and then he like adjusted things, adjusted splits, adjusted times, like mm. rest periods, and then like okay. gave me who new whole new uh, regime, and it just changed my whole setup. And then I went and did it myself when I moved up here to Massachusetts. I changed it. And uh, and then I changed it back. So I went through like a five by five period for a little bit where I was just like mm -hmm. trying to push out heavy weight and then, you know, five sets of five. And then finally I decided I was like, yo, I'm gonna go back to this uh, routine that I was doing while I was in Baltimore. And like numbers peaked back through the roof again. I was like, yeah, we on the right path. We, we get yeah. there again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's I, like I would love to get a personal trainer or like love to have somebody be like there with me but like also i don't like talking to people in the gym don't bother me <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like you know i feel like i am now in a place where i'm like fully i fully understand how to do everything well not everything but like i fully understand how to do the things put in front of me or the things that like are 
listed on my workout regimen and things like that. And I'm like, you know, now I'm, I always feel like, you know, you go, you're, you're motivated one day. Oh yes, I'm motivated. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then like something happens and then you're not super motivated anymore. Life starts happening. Things, things start, you know, taking over and changing and stuff like that. But I, you know, I've been incredibly motivated over these last couple of weeks. I want to say after WrestleMania weekend, um, I, you know, which I feel like is always like for every wrestler is like, oh, yeah, like we're back in the gym. We're back in the gym. WrestleMania weekend is like um, wrestlers like January 1st. Like, yep. oh, yes, I'm <laughs> back really in the is. gym, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> now, I was in the gym before WrestleMania weekend just because I don't want none of y'all bitches trying to clock me now. <laughs> but... I feel like after WrestleMania weekend and after, you know, the events of Philly and especially since in Philly, I didn't do shit but eat uh, cheesesteaks and drink cocktails. I'm, you know, I feel way better about my workout regimen and like really how, you know, things are going to be. And I'm like, I really, you know, doing, I do an hour or like an hour and a half of cardio every morning now. And I'm just like, I was never that girl. Like I used to start my workouts with 15 minutes tops of cardio and then like lift and then go. But like, I'm kind of in this new way. I'm like, you know, I think, I definitely think we'll see changes in, in the next few weeks, which I'm excited for. Yeah, I always tell, like, even when I talk to my clients and stuff like that, I'm always telling them, like, yo, give yourself 90 days because there, there's uh, four, there's three aspects that are going to happen to it, right? In the first, like, six weeks, like, somebody around you is just going to tell you, oh, you look like you've been in the gym. And then you're going to feel like, oh, I'm really good. I feel good, right? Yeah. Then you have, like, that six to eight week period where, like, a family member is going to say it. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah. And I'm feeling it now. Like, I feel, now I know I'm feeling great. And then that 10 to 12 week period is when you're going to notice it. And yeah. then you're going to be like, yeah, I'm on the right path. But you have yeah. to give yourself like that 90 days because yeah. what ends up happening is, uh, I don't know if you saw this TikTok video or not, but it was this kid. He was on the app cruncher and he was just like a little kid and he was kind of pudgy. Right. But he's like crunching away. And then he like lifts up his shirt and like nothing changes, throws his head back. And I'm like, that's how I feel. People look all the time <laughs> boy i i feel that little boy because that's my that's my problem is i get in the gym one day and i want to look like finn balor when i when right. i look in the mirror <laughs> i did one workout and i look in the mirror and i'm like i've looked like this for the last three weeks <laughs> yeah no it's it's the discipline it's the motivation it's the thing and like I feel like I'm really motivated now. Like, I feel like, you know, there have been times where I've been like super motivated and this, that, and the fourth, but like there may have been other things that have kept me from fully committing. But, you know, I feel like I'm really motivated. I feel like I'm fully committing to, you know, changing the way that I look and, you know, looking different by, you know, the end of, by, look, by the time my birthday come around, child, okay, my birthday is at the end of September. I'm trying to look a little bit different. That, that's a good <laughs> five months. I think I have a good amount of time. Oh, yeah. You can definitely make a big changes in, in five to six months. Yeah. yeah you, got, you got time. Because I know, like, I'm a, you know, I don't know when this episode might be out before this, but I know I, at least I'm going to see you at, like, are you at Focus Pro on May 25th? No, I think the next time I'm, uh, I don't, oh, wait, I don't know if I could tell you the next time that I'm there. I don't know. Um, we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll talk about off air. Don't worry about yeah. it now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. So, uh, but yeah, it's one of those things where I'm like, yeah, I know like I'm going to at least be at that show because I know I'll be like just at least helping out if they need yeah. to cameras and stuff. Not. But uh, no, I want to move on. So, because uh, I, I definitely could talk. We could nerd, we could nerd out about yeah. this stuff all I day. told you. I told you before <laughs> we that I got in trouble in school because I talked too damn much. <laughs> so, hey, uh, so you've been in for a couple of years. I know you've had one of these. These are one of my favorite things to always talk about. But uh, what's the worst bump you've taken? You know what's so crazy? I was just talking about this. Today's Thursday. I was just talking about this yesterday at training. I'm going to preface that. Okay, there's two bumps. Two bumps. The first one, I'm going to preface this by saying I fucking love Kylon. I love Flash. I love working with those guys. They're absolutely incredible. I would work with them a million, a million, 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 a million times. I have so much fun with them. 
they're 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 both just they're just at the top of their game right now. With that being said, the first time I took that fucking power flex, I was like, I got you. I'm like, okay, oh, you got me. Okay, like he's freakishly strong, and he like lifted me for the suplex. And I guess I didn't realize like it legit is a one two punch because it's like you land the suplex and then Flash is coming off the other the other turnbuckle with the frog splash like right after you land like you have no time to react right so like I took the superplex and I'm like oh okay oh <laughs> you all right <clears throat> yes like I couldn't like it knocked all of the wind out of me and like my chest was a little like hurts a little bit but it's okay i'll i'll be fine <laughs> but that was the first time i ever took that move mm-hmm. and like i mean i knew that i was fine i was i knew that i could take it it was no big deal but like i wasn't prepared in the sense of like i guess i didn't i didn't realize like the bump but the second time i took it i had that shit on that's all i'm gonna say about that one <laughs> i had that shit the fuck on um that's one and the second one this is like so this is 2021 this is like my third match ever and it was myself and brother greatness we were uh it was like we were as a tag team this is like very again very early in my career when we were uh uh running as a tag team i forgot what our tag team name was i'm not even gonna try to remember right now because we'll be here all night (laughs) but we were, uh, you know, moving as a tag team for a little bit. And it was, I think it was an Invictus show in like July, 2021. And basically I was taking the finish and the finish was supposed to be like a assisted German. Like the one, the bigger guy helped me in a German. The smaller one was going to springboard and give me a line and, you know, take the regular German bump. Yeah. The springboard got fucked up, so he ended up giving me a regular line. But the German, I landed, like, right on my, like, shoulder blade. Mm. So instead of taking, like, a flatter, you know, like, a flat, like, high high back or, like, neck or back bump or whatever, I landed, like, right on my shoulder blade. And one, two, three, we're done, right? I go to roll out, and I'm like, my arm. Why does my arm hurt? Why can't I fully rotate my arm? And I remember going home and I was like, yo, I cannot rotate my arm. And I think that was the first time I was ever like truly injured in wrestling. And, but I wasn't gone for that long. Maybe I should have went to the doctor and got that checked out. (laughs) I probably should have done that. But, you know. We back. (laughs) A little pain right here. I can rotate my shoulder. That's all I can say. That's what I feel like a lot of people miss out, man. Like the 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 good, the art to hitting like a good German suplex, right? It's not about yeah. like moving people high. It's move about people flat. Like the yeah. flatter you stay, the more elegant it looks, right? The more devastating it looks too. Yeah. And it's just a simple move, but yet some people, man, they just like, yo, I gotta get all this arc on it, or I gotta do this, or I gotta do that. Like I want to do yeah. it like a like. Kurt Angle does it. It's like Kurt has a flat suplex. Like it's so easy to throw. It's like I think it is Kurt that like picks him up and then just places him. Or maybe it's yeah. Eddie. Or Eddie maybe it is Kurt. Eddie, yes. That's what I'm remembering watching. Like, or maybe it was Benoit. I don't remember. It's one of those three. Would pick him up and just place him. And it's like well, like even Brock does it. Like I know if people yeah. like remember Brock, Brock for like throwing people, but if you ever watch Brock yeah. when his hips, when he drops, then they go flat and he literally yeah. his legs literally mm-hmm. make a 90 degree and the yeah. guys just go straight over the top. Like yep. it's, there's there's nothing there's nothing that needs to be like special about a German. You don't have to like yeah. take a guy and almost land him on the top of their neck, right? Or right. like off to the side because yeah. you tilted. So that, that's what it sounds like happened. Like when they came over, yeah. they rotated you through this way because they were afraid. And when they were afraid, then you laid it on your shoulder. And yeah. That's what and of course, blade. like you can't control how you're bumping when mm-hmm. like in something like that. You know what I'm saying? You're pr- pretty much at the complete mercy of the person who's handling you. But also it was three years ago. I don't even remember the people who get. Actually, no, I'm lying. 
I do remember this. You do. The, <laughs> I, I do. I do. But like, he's super cool. He's super dope. Like, we've seen each other mul multiple times since then. He's, you know, he's super dope. So, yeah. Yeah, I remember like when I was down in Maryland and I was like teaching, people would ask me all the time like how to throw Germans because they all knew like I was a college wrestler too. So I was like, yo, yeah, yeah I'll teach you how to throw one. It's easy. And then like one of my friends, he uh, he does not like to take German suplexes because somebody dropped him on his neck. And I was like, mm. I remember telling him, I was like, listen, bro, you can fight this all you want, right? Yeah. But you're going over whether you want to or not. So lean all your way forward like you want. I was like, but these hips don't lie, and you're going straight back. And they did. It's all <laughs> and, in the hips, babe. Yep. And once he went over, he was like, oh, shit, I'll do it again, buddy. <laughs> and then I just kept kept throwing him because he just realized he was like, yeah. oh, he's got me for days. I was like, yeah, I, I got you, bro. Like, don't don't trip. One of my uh, favorite people to take suplexes from is A-game. Because mm. he, you know, I mean, on top of, you know, just being one of my best friends and I trust him. Like, he's, like, really fucking good at what he does. So, like, I'm just like, yeah, you do whatever you want. I'm good. <laughs> oh, you want to give me this suplex? Drag it to a girl. I will land perfectly fine. It is what it is. You got yeah. me. I'm good. Yeah. No, I love, I, yeah, good suplex. Once you once you throw one and everybody knows you're throwing them, like, everybody will come to you and talk to you about, like, yo, wow. Well, yeah. Can you show me how to do it? Or can you do it to me? Can you throw me with this? I'm like, yeah, definitely. I got you. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> like, I love right. throwing them. Uh Yo, let me let me move this over, right? So, like you said, right, a couple years now uh, in the game. Uh, what's one of the hardest lessons you've had to learn being in the game? One of the hardest lessons. One of the hardest lessons I had to learn was sometimes people just say no. And you have to be okay with that. Like. You know, you can do, you can bust your ass, you can show up for ring crew, you can, you know, be there before the promoter gets there, leave after, leave with the promoter, go back to the promoter's house and help them, you know, load the ring in, whatever. You could literally go above and beyond and they will still look you in your face and go, thank you for your services, but we're not interested. And you got to be okay with that. You got to just go, okay. On to the next. And it's hard. Like early, it's hard because you, you know, you just you put gas, you put your time, your energy. You probably missed out on it on some coin over here. You, you know, missed out on family time, sacrifice, this, that, and the fourth. And somebody will still look you in your face and go, Thank you for your free labor, but the answer is no. Yep. And you have to be okay with that. And I at the beginning. Now, look, I'm, I've been okay with no's because, as I said before, I was in the entertainment industry already. So no is a word that I've heard a lot. So now I'm kind of at a place where, and this is one of the lessons my dad taught me for years. Um, he would say, you know, the worst I could say is no. And you know what? Yeah. Granted, some of these people be going a little too crazy. You know, like, it's not like somebody's going to say, you know, no, fuck you, da 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 you're, you're a horrible person. Some, sometimes people just leave you on delivered, leave you on red, leave you on whatever. And it just is what it is. And you pick up the pieces. And I feel like, too, people will say, oh, well, you know, you got to no sell it and move on. No sell it on the internet. No sell it, you know, there. But, like, feel have your emotions about it. Be upset. You're, you're, it's your human right to be upset at the fact that you wasted all this time or you feel like you wasted money and gas and whatever. But at the end of the day, in the terms and conditions, when you sign up to be a professional wrestler, it literally says, you're not guaranteed anything. You are 100. And this is one of the lessons that uh, my coach, Logan Black, has taught me literally since the day that I walked in T2T Wrestling Academy, you're not you're not owed anything. Wrestling owes you nothing. You just have to be okay with the fact that you are putting in 100%. And maybe you only ever get 2% back. Maybe you literally only ever get, you know, this much from professional wrestling. But you have to be okay with that. And I think that that's been a part of my journey of, learning how to just be happy and 
you know, love where I am and obviously want more and strive for more and still getting in cars and still sending emails and still doing whatever it is you can to make sure that you get to that place and being in the gym Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. Like, you have to be okay with knowing that you, yes, you are making these sacrifices and these sacrifices may be in vain, but you're doing it because you doing something that you love to do. It's true. It's true. I I 100% agree with that. Like you yeah. got to be okay with no and you got to be okay knowing that you're putting 100% in and yeah. you're probably going to get told no and you just got to keep going. You just yeah. got to keep keep striving forward, keep moving forward. That's why I was like the one thing is is like I I was uh I was back in Baltimore uh so not time with timestamp for this for you guys, but this last weekend and uh I was helping train new kids. And it's been a while since I've been back in training. Um, but it was just nice to be back in training and taking some bumps and stuff like that and just working and like just having fun with, uh, with the guys again. So I was like, yeah, all right, this is a kickstart that I kind of want to get back into training again and get back into, to learning from somebody else. And I was like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to finally like get back into that and just and do yeah. it again. So I, I to- truly understand where you're coming from and then still sending out emails and like, Text yeah, messages and messages to people and just asking questions. The funny part is, um, and this was something that I learned uh, from a good buddy of mine, Eel Neal. Was um, oh, I love Eel, one of my favorite people. Eel's ever. my dude. Eel told me too. He says, you know, when you go on Netflix, do you read every description that is in every single show? Probably not. But if a friend told you, hey, you should check out the show, you're probably checking out that show. He's like, and that's exactly what your network should do. You should go to your friends that are at certain promotions that you want to work at and just be like, hey, can you, one, give me the promoter's name to whoever is running XYZ? And then can you drop a, my name to him and let him know that I'm going to contact him? And I was like, oh, that's insane. Yeah. But I like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I know, like, uh, there's recently, like, I've been wanting to go. There's a promotion that I want to work at. And uh, I know that I know the promoters, like, really well. And mm-hmm. their champion, at really well. Like, we're yeah. all really good friends. I was like, hey, how come I'm not here? And they're like, yeah, I don't know. Why haven't you sent us your stuff? I was like, you know what? That That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will do this. Got to use your resources. And that's yeah. why I love things like WrestleMania weekend, where you're literally in a room with a bunch of people and, you know, you're networking and you're getting to know people and, you know, somehow you end up, you know, backstage at a fashion show with shout out to Yolanda, that fashion show WrestleMania weekend was so much fun with like Kiara Hogan and Tasha Steeles, who are both incredibly sweet and so nice. And, uh, you know, and I've, I've known Sonny for like two years now, but like you're in these rooms with these people and you're able to go, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I'm always weird about that. I'm always because I don't ever want people to feel like I am using their friendship as a, a step stool because I want people to understand that I'm I want to be genuinely like a fun person to be around. But I and I also don't want you to feel like, oh, here he goes. He's coming around. He's going to ask for something. But also, I did learn uh, this coming WrestleMania weekend, this past WrestleMania weekend, um, rather, closed mouths don't get fed. Yeah. And, you know, if you keep your mouth closed and you don't say nothing and you're just like, all right, well, if, if they wanted me, they would, you know what I'm saying? And that's an ego thing that I had to kill myself. It's like, a, you know, if they want you, they'll contact you. Well, yeah. Well, yes. But also, Everybody don't know who you are, baby. Yep. And, you know, people be doing 8 million different things. Maybe you just got to drop a little bug in their ear. Just, hey, hey, girl. 100%. And I learned that lesson WrestleMania weekend uh, because I would not have been on Big A Brunch had I not said, hey, Effie, like, I'm coming to Philly. Like, I'd love to work with you again. And he was like, yeah, I'll put you on the show. I was like, oh, okay. It was that easy. All right, well, maybe I need to start doing this more often. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny too, because like you'll get that, you'll get that one yes, and then you're gonna be like, all right, well, let's go get another one. Okay, we'll get another. All right, well, you again, I'm gonna get another one. Chasing that high, chasing that feeling. 
Hey, so we're going to jump into my favorite part of the three count podcast, right? Which is the three count podcast, 10 count questions. Mr. Carter, this is how it works. I'm going to fire off 10 questions at you rapid fast. And whatever your answer is, that's your answer. Okay. Oh, I hate, I hate stuff like this because I'm a horrible test taker. <laughs> well, we're going to put on an imaginary timer for added pressure. Okay. Bing. And All in right. the words of my favorite color commentator, Mike Goldberg, here we actually play by play commentator Mike Goldberg. Here we go. Smackdown or Raw? Smackdown. Favorite cartoon? Uh, this is a throwback, and I just realized that this show is 20 years old, and it just was uh, what the fuck. People may not remember it, but Code Lyoko. Yep. <laughs> I'm familiar. Uh, Marvel or DC? Marvel. Uh, favorite movie? Oh my God, that's hard. That's so hard. Um, the movie that is coming to the tip of my brain right now is Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Let's go. I love it. Uh, Apple or Android? Apple. Oh, girl. Girl. <laughs> don't even get me started. Okay. I don't I do not do no green text. We don't do no... I wear a green hoodie because for Beyonce, but we don't do no green text. <laughs> uh, favorite actor or actress? Actor or actress. I don't really know if I am one. Um, well, you know what? One of my favorite actresses is Regina King. Love her. Favorite actor would be probably uh, RDJ, Robert Downey Jr. Like it, like it. Chocolate chip cookie dough or brownie batter? Chocolate chip cookie dough. That's right. We talk about ice creams around here sometimes. <laughs> uh, favorite podcast? Favorite podcast. Mm. Um, there's a few, I don't really have like a set one. Um, I just kind of listen to, you know what? There is, she, uh, I guess not the technically a podcast. It's like more of a YouTube channel, but like I listen to her lives all the time. Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, her name is Bondi Blue. Uh, she is, you know, a pop culture, you know, YouTuber, and, you know, she talks about like a lot of things like that. And she is absolutely fucking hilarious. And I, you know, she's from my favorite city in the world, New Orleans. So Bondi Blue, she's my fave. Love it. Love it. Uh, nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. Uh, I'm always going to put my friends over. Uh, again, Joseph, Alexander, uh, Joseph Alexander, again. Let's go. And then last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on this podcast favorite curse word my favorite curse word i don't have a favorite word i have a favorite cuss like phrase and it's fuck shit i like it <laughs> just take two good words and just smash them together <laughs> fuck shit is my favorite thing to say because <laughs> stop coming to me with this fuck shit like leave me alone <laughs> i like it Yo, so listen, those are all my questions I have for you. So the thing I'll have you do is let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. Well, girl, you can find me on social media pretty much everywhere at Money Dragon TV. Um, we talk about Housewives. We talk about Beyonce. And sometimes we talk about wrestling. Um you can find me on Instagram there where I just, you know, post pictures of me being a bad bitch and also talk about wrestling and housewives and Beyonce. Um, you can find me coming up May 10th. I'll be at Blitz Creek Pro uh, May 11th. I can't tell you where I'll be on May 11th yet, but keep a lock on my social media. And then you'll find out where I'll be on May 11th. Um, tomorrow, I will be at 880 Wrestling, Family Ties to Wrestling Junie Underwood. Very fun. I'm very excited for that one. And uh, yeah, we got more things coming up in the coming months. We have things launching. We have things that we're working on in the business realm and in the entertainment realm that I'm excited to share with everyone. So Nice. Love it. Love it. Well, there you go. He gave you all his handles. He told you where you're going to find them. And, uh, you know, like every great part of a wrestling match, 
We got to take this home because this is the three count podcast that is now entering. And now I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling. And like I said, it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. So who's entering the ring? You see him right there. The money dragon himself, Angelo Carter. And you know what to do. Tune into the next episode and be there. Or you're going to legitimately follow us on all of our social media platforms. You're checking us out on Spotify. You're listening to us on Amazon Music. You're even checking us out on iHeartRadio or whatever that dumb jingle is that they do. You're checking us out. Uh, you're buying all of our merch. You're telling your friends about us. You're telling your mom about us. You're telling your dad about us. You're telling your uncle, your aunties, and you're even telling your cousins about us. You're even telling Everybody your enemies about us because we love haters too. You're doing all those things. You're you know sharing this, commenting, liking, buying our merch, or really you're just kind of waiting for that outro, uh, waiting for this episode to end, and then you're choosing another episode to listen to. <laughs> Kawaii. What's going on? It is Clipper Red Dog, the man that we you up that mountain called wrestling. And what we need from you guys is to kind of show some support, right? We want you guys to go to our YouTube channel at the Three Count Podcast, go on to our Twitch channel, Three Count Pod, or even our Facebook page, Three Count Podcast, and just give us a like, follow, subscribe, even give us a comment, right? Do all that cool stuff. Share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your enemies, right? Or you can even come talk to us and just chat us up, right? Find us on Twitter at Three Count underscore Pod. Find us on IG and on TikTok at Three Count Pod. Go ahead and leave us those comments. We want to hear from all of you guys. We're going to keep putting on videos and stuff like that. We want to keep making this content better. So we want your guys' support. Also, if you guys want to, go support us at ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the three count podcast or even find us on ForYourWear.com. Give us the support. Show us your guys' love because we want to give it right back to y'all. So in the meantime, between time, love y'all.